Good morning. Happy Easter. He is truly risen on this beautiful day. Now as we begin the liturgy this morning, I'm going to ask you, because it's Easter, to lift up your voice as a song for two reasons. One is to praise the Lord on this day of recollection, and secondly is to wake up the other priests who are still in bed. <laughs> Enjoy me in doing that. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and the Lord be with you all. Amen. We come together today to celebrate this great feast of resurrection, of new life, of new starting. Let's thank God for the gift of the Son. Let's thank God for our glorious salvation history. In order to prepare ourselves to where we celebrate these youth, this Eucharist, let us call to mind our own simple. You're sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins to bring us to the lost in life. And let's sing our glory to God. conquered death and unlock for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is raised with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. to speak and said, You know what has happened 
all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country or the Jews, of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, he commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Echo me as I sing.
When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Let's all stand and sing our Alleluia. According to John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb. And we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with a burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that had to rise, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Easter, the Feast of the Resurrection, gives us the joyous message that we are a resurrected people. We are a people of the resurrection. This means that we are not supposed to lie buried in the tomb of our sins and human shortcomings. It gives us the good news that no tomb can hold us down anymore. Not the tomb of despair, discouragement, or doubt, nor that of death, Instead, we are expected to live a joyful and peaceful life, constantly experiencing the real presence of the risen Lord in all the events of our lives. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The resurrection of Jesus had a certain had certain special features. First, Jesus prophesied, it, uh, proclaiming it as a sign of his divinity. Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it again. Second, the founder of no other religion has an empty tomb as Jesus did. We see the fulfillment of Christ's promise on the empty cross and in the empty tomb. The angel said to the women at Jesus' tomb, Why are you looking among the dead for the one who is alive? He is not here. He has been raised. The third special feature 
is the initial disbelief of Jesus' own disciples in his resurrection, in spite of his repeated apparitions. This serves as a strong proof of, the, of his resurrection. It explains why the apostles started preaching the risen Christ only after receiving the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Proclamation and witness bearing are often the themes of Paul's uh, uh, epistles in the Gospels. The story of Cor uh, Cornelius and his family, in the second reading that Paul uh, talks about, shows that Cornelius was converted, converted by the word of God and called to witness. Just as Paul was converted, he became a zealot in preaching the word of God. He became the apostle, the preacher, par excellence. Today, in the gospel, it is explained that the empty tomb, the resurrection experience of Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John were extraordinary. Mary Magdalene proclaimed her personal experience, I have seen the Lord. And it was at the time that she realized what Jesus had been talking about when he gave testimony to the fact that in three days he would rise from the tomb. Easter reminds us that every good Friday in our lives will have an Easter Sunday, and that Jesus will let us share the power of his resurrection. Each time we display our love of others, we share the resurrection. Each time we face a betrayal of trust, we share in the resurrection of Jesus. Each time we fail in our attempts to ward off temptation, but keep on trying to overcome them, we share in the resurrection of Jesus. Each time we continue to hope, even when our hope seems unanswered, we share in the power of Jesus' resurrection. In short, the message of Easter is that nothing can destroy us. Not pain, sin, rejection, nor death. Because Christ has conquered all these, and we too can conquer them if we put our faith in our risen Lord. The late Catholic Archbishop of Hartford, Connecticut, John Whalen, my home archdiocese, had undergone cancer surgery resulting in a permanent colostomy when he wrote these very personal words in one of his last Easter messages. He wrote, I am now a member of an association of people who have been wounded by cancer. That association has its symbol, the phoenix, a bird of Egyptian mythology. The Greek poet Hesiod, who lived eight centuries before Jesus was born, wrote about this legendary bird in his poetry. When the bird felt its death was near, it would fly off to Phoenicia, build a nest of aromatic wood, and set itself on the fire. When the bird was consumed by flame, a new phoenix sprang forth from the ashes. Thus the phoenix symbolizes immortality resurrection, and life after death. It sums up the Easter message perfectly. Jesus gave up his life 
and from the grave he was raised to life again on the third day. New life rises from the ashes of death. Today we are celebrating Christ's victory over the grave, the gift of eternal life for all who believe in Jesus. That is why the Phoenix bird is one of the earliest symbols of the risen Christ. The Phoenix also symbolizes our daily rising to new life. Every day, like the Phoenix, we rise from the ashes of sin and guilt and are refreshed and renewed by our living Lord and Savior with his forgiveness and the assurance he still loves us and will continue to give us the strength we need. Archbishop John Whelan could have lived in a gloomy tomb of self-pity hopeless defeat and chronic sadness. But his faith in the risen Lord opened his eyes to, to a new vision of life. Have you ever heard the story of the man whose hobby was growing roses? When he worked in his rose garden, he always whistled. It seemed to everyone that he was whistling much louder than was needed for his own enjoyment. One day a neighbor asked him why it was that he always whistled so loudly. The man took the neighbor into his home to meet his wife. The woman was not only an invalid, but was completely blind as well. The man, you see, was whistling not for his benefit, but rather for the benefit of his wife. He wanted his blind wife to know that he was nearby and that she was not alone. That story is a wonderful illustration of the significance of Easter Day. The affirmation, Christ is risen, reminds us that God is near, and the experiencing of his presence strengthens us in our weakness. It allows us to live our faith in hope, to share our faith in love, and to be people of the risen Christ, truly grateful for the grace and gift of this resurrection. <coughs> Please stand. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men, for our, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, and rose on the third day, the day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and Lord God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
in life and the world to come. Amen. On this day of resu- resurrection, we call upon the Lord to hear the prayers of all people in our world, to listen to the needs of those most in need of his presence and the most in need of his loving power. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For eyes to open to the new life in the church, for inspiring bishops and pastors, wise confessors and catechists, dedicated ministers of music and art, and all those with whom we worship, we pray. Lord. For I hope open to the new life in our church community, for those newly baptized and received into the church, for the children whose enthusiasm energizes us, we pray. For eyes open to the new life all around us, for the beauties of spring, for the small kindnesses of strangers, for the good that happens every day, we pray, risen here on earth. For eyes open to the efforts to alleviate suffering, care for the sick, tend to the dying, and console those who mourn, we pray especially for Lee Brown, Richard Craig, Kathy.